the subject of today's video I was very much happily doing last night was playing with this laser module from the laser printer complete with a class 3B laser yay it can burn stuff but there's a problem invisible means it's IR which also makes it perhaps a little too dangerous to necessarily use as a burner you know an invisible laser is uh, yeah, orders of magnitude more dangerous than uh, any visible laser because you can't react to it because you can't see the damn thing. But anyway, so what we have is the lovely laser mechanism, complete with rotating mirror. Well, you may notice by the wires we have it hooked up to power. Let's demonstrate. And we can fire it up. We have a total of two enable lines along with a power supply and we can actually operate this from what's supposed to be 24 but it's actually 22 volts down to about 8 to 7 volts is when it starts to drop out but you can actually operate it down that low of course the speed of this is reduced there's a surprising amount of torque as well and then of course the blue line is enable full speed now I have taken to the joy of shining lasers into it and projecting funky patterns on my wall and whatnot and I even dug out my super dangerous eBay laser of Doom, which is currently a bit dead on the battery, so it's no brighter than a standard laser pointer at the moment. Hey, look, you can see the multiplexing on the camera. So I'm thinking, well, why not try it and build a raster display? You know, like a CRT, but only orders of magnitude cooler because it involves lasers. And of course, it'll be monochrome. Green is the preferred colour as it will look more cool and also maybe we can go for the old terminal look and have it as a composite monitor that can project things like the Acorn Electron uh, command line onto the wall and then you have an awesome retro looking display which is also a bit sci-fi <laughs> essentially building your own laser projector which is a lot more primitive than the units you can buy which do full colour but also cost a heck of a lot more than three out of a bin. So how do we drive these things? Well first is finding power. Conveniently, if I grab a good pointy thing, bear with me, we have these four po points down here, these four lovely solder pads. They're connected directly to these. So as a matter of probing them, probe the negative on the capacitor, find the one which beeps, Probe the positive on the capacitor, find the one that beeps. Excellent, we have our power, because that is obviously a power filter cap. And the middle two don't continuity with absolutely anything else to do with power, which means they're your data. So I hooked up 24 volts, uh, finding a data sheet to a similar chip, as this is one of those buddy chips which is under an NDA. I hate NDAs because they make my life harder. And so we applied 24 volts. Absolutely nothing was the initial result. So eventually, after giving up on the Google searches, I started experimenting with the brown and blue wire, hooking them up to negative and positive, hooking them up brown to negative, blue to positive, nothing. Then I hooked both brown and blue up, blue up to negative, brown to positive, and we had life. In fact, we had full speed and so it turns out that the blue is basically enable full speed brown is enable low speed 
and if you hold the blue on eventually after being in full speed it will just shut down and go into a state where it needs to be reset which is quite an interesting occurrence but you can reset it by just taking the brown lead off the positive or whatnot and if you apply the blue lead to the positive when you've released the brown lead from the positive it acts as a brake and actually breaks it so it stops quicker so that's quite an interesting eventuality but you can't actually have it running we'll see if we can demonstrate it if you can stand the noise which basically means we've figured out how to drive this thing with little to no real made effort now it will shut down and all need to be reset fully as you see it will come to a stop pop out that put it on the positive nothing changes anything we wouldn't do the brown but we'll just reset it like with the power so the next stage is to either figure out how to drive this board and of course either we can just stick this module in or we can just replace the diode with another green equivalent which is actually diode pumped laser because these actually start off in the IR spectrum which is why you need IR filters I'd install my own IR filter into this using this laser though I only want the bright green light, I don't want the dangerous IR and so the plan is either to use this circuit or use my own circuit modulating it under composite based signal but why does it do this slow mode to fast? Well the option is obvious really. This is what makes a certain degree of noise as the printer starts. You know that classic that we're getting now. That is the laser spinning up but it starts off in a slower state for the simple reason it's quicker to get to full speed which means you can actually print far faster than if you're bringing up from a complete stop we could do a live demonstration but there's not much point anyone knows that something that's spinning about half the speed will tend to get to top speed faster it's basically like driving at 30 to go into 60 miles an hour to start now from zero the car that's at 30 miles an hour already will get to 60 faster than the car that's at zero miles an hour when they both start from the point from point A which is where they it's the starting line so not so much a well it is a technical video but hey but yeah if anyone wants to throw some resources this way into potentially making this project a reality if not it can just become a funky laser light show because you can stick another rotating or vibrating mirror on the output and you can have an almost raster type scan on your wall so yeah throw some links across suggestions what not and that'll be all good also this board actually has a feedback chip in the back that's what this lens is about you may notice there's actually two different lenses here well one will bounce off and scan out but part of one pot scan of the beam sends it through to the feedback sensor which will probably actually allow this to measure things like the output power and that because remember this is doing a raster scan this thing needs to be able to modulate its power it's essentially running like a CRT without the CRT because it's scanning the drum coil but only instead of being able to scan in a horizontal vector the drum does that by spinning and then of course it gets applied to the other side the static and Shazam works a treat the static career gets reversed onto the paper and it's extracted from the drum which then means the excess toner drops off into the excess toner bin I'm not sure whether it can be reused or not and then it goes up to the uh, bondy unit at the top and so it is permanently bonded to the paper with its waxy composites and that in the toner then you can do other funky stuff like it, like PCB etching and that, which is something I need to get started on. But I need some ferric chloride and some more information first. Anyway, 
not much to more to say on that, at least not for now. There might you might be seeing more from this at a later date. So for now, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. As a quick note, this is actually quite efficient too. Not bad for current consumption. These types of status bars are absolutely, completely bloody pointless. They tell you absolutely nothing. Seriously, give me a progress bar that tells me the progress of the installation. That doesn't tell me anything. It can crash and it can still do that. It's like the 99%, it will just be loading for eternity. Give me a proper bar, Microsoft. Not these nonsense. This is useless.